Okay, so today I'm going to talk about instruction of early reading based on science. As a preface, I want to say that my goal today is that I give you some affirmation, some confirmation of something that you're doing, um, that's something you've done in the past, or maybe I'll give you an idea for something that you can add to your repertoire as a teacher. I want to be clear that from my perspective, changes in education don't help happen as a revolution, but happen as small changes that accumulate over time. So today I'm actually going to give you an opportunity to share. I'm going to give you an URL at the end to share a small change with, with me. It won't go any further than me. And I'm gonna give away some prizes to people who send me their small changes. So as reading teachers, all of us have a vision of our kids as great readers. We know that text is the source of new information about the world around us, and also about the social world past and even projected into the future. We learn from text and reading is central to that process. We all want the very best for our students. And there are so many ideas that are circling about for how we can do the very best possible job as teachers. In fact, now during a time when many people are needing to be teachers of reading, the number of ideas are circulating even more on the internet. One of the ideas that we hear about has to do with the science of reading. That's a term that we're hearing at this point. Now, in my career as a teacher, the terms related to the science of reading, at one point we talked about learning to read the great debate about phonics or language, we've talked about evidence-based instruction. Periodically, um, big organizations, typically these are funded, all of the ones that I'm showing you here have been funded by the U.S. Department of Education, does a summary of research. One of the things that we want to point out is when we talk about research and science, it's not just a single study. We don't expect that there's a single silver bullet that changes everything. But there are bodies of work that people add to where we come to understand better what it is that kids need to learn when they become a reader and also what it is that we need to do in terms of instruction. Now, some of these reports, I was involved in becoming a nation of readers and that was intended to be a beginning reading report. But when this commission of people like Jean Chaw and Isabel Beck and, and um, Dick Anderson got together, it was clear that they believed that findings about beginning reading needed to be embedded in a bigger picture. That also happened with the National Reading Panel, which became a basis for No Child Left Behind. And in that report, which we really haven't had updated very much in the last 20 years, um, we, we see five pillars. Now, more recently, in a new report uh, from that, that was funded by the US Department of Education, we hear about knowledge as being critical to the process, and we can consider knowledge as a sixth pillar. Okay, so there's a lot of research in a lot of different aspects of reading because yes, reading is a complex, reading in English especially is a complex process and the instruction of reading is complex. After all, you've got at least 20 to 25 very different small human beings, an adult and a complex array of interactions in that context. But we know that at the center of the process of reading is comprehension. And I'm gonna to talk today about comprehension related to reading text. 
Yes, we can comprehend when somebody reads to us, but to truly comprehend in reading, one needs to be able to, to code. But before I get to that, we know that comprehension is based on what we know. So what I know about a topic influences how what I comprehend from a text. But furthermore, what I learn also comes from text. So my background knowledge builds on my process of comprehension. We also know that vocabulary is really critical. And some of you know that this is the area that I've done a lot of work in. And vocabulary, by the way, is very closely connected to decoding because it's not just decoding to say a word, it's decoding to get to the meaning of words. So the words we know anchor our knowledge and help us recognize quickly. So it's not just decoding, but as the National Reading Panel said, it's also fluency or automaticity. And underlying this process is phonemic awareness. Now today, I'm actually gonna focus on the decoding with automaticity. I'm not gonna talk about some of the processes related to phonemic awareness, but I wanna ask four questions related to research on decoding. Now, why is decoding so incredibly critical? Well, here you have, this is a very recent study that my colleagues and I have done. We use Dibbles data to see what kids in different quartiles knew about reading. These are the words that an average kid in the 25th quartile, that means some kids knew a few more words, some didn't know as many. But as you can see here in one minute, these are the words that kids knew on average. And for us looking at it, it doesn't make much sense. And we can be pretty sure because it just took us a nanosecond to read it, that for the little kid reading this in a minute, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. So in fact, they weren't reading for comprehension. Now, by the end of the year, they've expanded their knowledge. Now you see that they know some long vowel words like green and tree and sizes. They know a few more high frequency words like come and some, but it's still not coming together. Decoding matters and in English, it's an especial hurdle that needs to really be dealt with. 